Hi there folks, I hope you're all safe and well. This short video is about setting assignments in Google Classroom. We've taken some top tips from across the school with a variety of different faculties and departments chipping in and hopefully this covers most of what you need to know and a few bits and pieces that you might not yet have come across. So what we're going to cover is the difference between assignments and posting material. We're going to look at how you can attach different types of material to an assignment and give pupils access to that. Why you might want to consider giving your assignment a topic. How you can go about setting different assignments to different pupils and what you can do to schedule an assignment to post in the future. So I'm going to pause quickly and switch over into Google Classroom. So here we are in my regular Google Classroom and the class I'm going to use today is this one here. I'm just going to use this test class as a demonstration. So the first thing you'll see obviously as we click on the test class you can see the stream. Um, often it's a little bit easier to see the if you use the classwork tab instead as that helps organize things a little bit better. So I need to create my assignment. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit up here. I'm going to create and as you can see, there's a few different choices here. And um, we've got an assignment. We've got a quiz assignment. We could post a question that um, we're looking for students to answer. We could post material and we could reuse posts. So quickly, I just wanted to mention the difference between an assignment and material. Essentially, when you're posting an assignment, you are giving it a deadline, you may be giving it a mark and you may be attaching a rubric. When you post the material, it might just be extra resources that you want pupils to be able to use, but it doesn't come with a specific deadline. So as you can see down here, I've got two um, assignments that have been posted. And I can tell because I've got that little icon, I can tell that those ones are assignments. And then I've also posted one which is just material and that is just giving them some slides and a possible revision quiz that they could look at. So I'm not expecting them to look at that necessarily. I'm not giving them a deadline to look at that, but I'm allowing them to have it as extra material should they want to go and revise from that. Now, when we're creating an assignment, one of the things that could potentially be useful, particularly if you are um, a PT and you maybe perhaps have a member of staff who you need to set work for that day, um, or if you are covering more than one level, or sorry, more than one class of the same level um, and they've been split into two different classes, you can come down into this reuse post section. So I might go into any, I can pick any of my classes, um, including ones that have previously been archived, so some older classes. So I say maybe wanted to set um, some higher work and I might want to go into one of the higher classes um, click on a set of posts or and decide which one it is I want to use. Again, as you can see, they've got the little icon so you can tell whether it's an assignment or whether it's material. So if I just wanted to exactly copy the work that I'd set for this higher class, I could just select that one and then hit reuse. Now, I'm not going to do that because I want to demonstrate just now how we can attach different things to an assignment. So I am just going to go up to create assignment. So in your assignment, obviously, you maybe want to give it a title and then you're going to want to give them some specific instructions. So I'm not going to do loads just now just because nobody wants to painfully watch me type. So I might normally say something to them. I'd maybe give them talk about what their learning intentions for the week are, uh, leave them some success criteria and then I might list the tasks that I want them to do and what it is that that might look like with a few more detail. So let's say this week we're going to watch a video, complete some notes and do a quick quiz. Not very exciting, but I'll do for the purposes of this video. So having set that, I'm then going to want to set them um, a few different bits and pieces of work. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go down into here and hit add. Um, I've previously posted the material to my Google Drive. And so I'm going to put it up here 
And now, depending on where you store things in Google Drive, this step might take um, longer or not. Um, I've just gone in recently and found the bits and pieces that I wanted. So I'm going to, I want to give them both of these um, pieces of information just now. I want both of them to have both slides and their notes. Now, the slides are ones that I want them to be able to read through. I don't want them to edit that, so I'm going to leave this bit over here as students can view the file. The notes section, however, I want them to be able to edit that and I want them all to have their own copy. This is going to be their notes for their revision. So over here, I'm going to hit make a copy for each student in order that they can use um, their own copy and that will be assigned only to them. Now, I've also said that I want them to watch a video, so I'm going to pop a video link in here. Now, it might be that you've already got the link. You've already copied it from uh, Loom, if that's what you've been using, um, or you might have it uploaded onto your Google Drive, so you could add it in there. I'm just going to show you that um, if you go directly onto YouTube, if you have one that you want to use from there, you can attach it directly. And it doesn't necessarily have to be one that you've done already it could be something different so i'm just going to quickly search for um this one which should find there we go that's what i'm looking for so then i'm just going to attach that now again you can be putting that as an, in as a link um and if you've got your own loom videos that um you've got a link to on loom then you can add that in or if you've been downloading videos from loom and saving them as files you can be attaching them from that so I know they've got access to the video and um, I also want them to get access to the revision quiz um, which is this one up here on my Quizlet. So I've just switched tabs, opened up Quizlet and um, this is the one that I'm wanting them to look at. So I'm just going to copy that link in just now and I'm going to hit add link. And there we go, we've also got a link so they can, uh, they can see all of these and work their way through them as they need to, depending on what it is that I've set for them to do. So there we go, they've got all of access to those, and um, they can see the links, I've attached a variety of different materials. Now when it comes to setting the work, I'm going to for the moment leave that one as unmarked, um, the quiz in fact will mark itself. Um, I will give it a due date, which let's just say it's going to be on Wednesday and I'm also going to give it a topic. Now this is particularly important if you're wanting to help keep your sort of class work tab in Google Classroom organised. So I'm going to set it as having a specific topic which means it'll be assigned on that one. One of the other things that you might want to know about is the fact that up here this is being set for this test class. I could, however, be setting it for more than one class if I like. So there we go, it's being set for four different classes. So again, if you've got more than one class um, at the same level or doing the same work, you could be setting them to more than one class at a time. I don't want to confuse anybody, so I'll leave those ones as they are. So I'm just leaving that to the test class and it's automatically set to all students. Now there is only one student in here, um, however if you wanted you can untick the all students box and I could just set it for one pupil um, or I could set it to a group of people. So if you're wanting to differentiate some of your resources and you're wanting to set specific assignments or specific tasks for um, smaller groups of pupils then you can be doing that. If, for example, you're wanting to do some group work, you could have one of your documents could be set as students can edit the file, but it's not their own personal copy. So you can have that set to students can edit that file. And then up here, you could be setting it to just two students. So only those two pupils would be able to edit that file and could collaborate on it if they wanted to. Now, the last thing that I wanted to mention was the fact that you can schedule your assignments for the future. So maybe at the moment, and it's um, perhaps maybe it's late at night as you're setting this and you don't want pupils phones pinging, etc. But you don't know for sure that you're going to remember the next morning to come back in and post it. If you're up here, you can go down to schedule. So instead of hitting assign, hit the arrow next to it, schedule. 
and you can decide when that's going to go out. So say I want that to go out on the 15th of June at 8 o'clock in the morning and I just kind of hit schedule there and there we go, it's gone. So I'm back in my classwork tab. As you can see, I've got my topics, so any work I have set for any of these specific key areas of higher biology has been split up. And as you can see, that one I've just created um, for week six, that particular assignment that I've left for them. Um, it's greyed out and we've got a little box there that says scheduled for tomorrow at eight o'clock. So I hope that was helpful. If anyone else has any additional top tips, please let us know and we'll get those added on and posted out to everybody.